What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll show you how to get the best performance, if not playable performance, from South of Midnight. This is probably going to be one of my quickest optimization guides. As usual, I'm not going to cover Windows optimization at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find videos to get even more performance out of your system. This video is only focusing on the in-game options. So, South of Midnight. In the options screen, graphics, there's only a handful of settings here. We've got screen preferences, followed by just a handful of toggles for quality here. Here. These are super simple, and I'll break these down in game. Starting off at the screen preference, however, HDR, your preference, on or off based on however you're playing, window mode, preferably full screen for better input latency and performance, though that's not absolutely key here. Bornless is just fine on most systems, especially modern systems. Auto configuration, yeah, it's fine, you can run it if you wish, and it should change options to better suit your system, but there's a couple of surprises that I'll show you in just a moment. Down here, graphics, motion blur, probably leave this on it's more of a cinematic devil may cry type slash game upscaling dlss taau don't use this at all or none unfortunately there's no fsr from what i can tell maybe there is on non-nvidia graphics cards in place of dlss but if you can use dlss use it otherwise just select none if possible if performance allows when you have dlss selected i'd recommend dla to get even more quality out of the game where it'll take your native resolution and make it look even better with a very small performance costs. You can compare this to none, and there should be almost no difference, especially on modern GPUs. Finally, VSync, I would recommend turning this off, so your FPS is uncapped. Make sure the frame rate limiter is turned off here, unless things like OBS Studio, browsers, Discord, and that are lagging in the background, in which case you can cap your FPS to slightly lower than what you're actually getting to free up some extra GPU. This game is very GPU intensive, especially at 2K or even 4K, so keep that in mind. I haven't progressed super far into the story, but just standing still gives me more than enough info to demonstrate exactly what's happening here. So, pulling up an FPS counter and stepping forwards towards this over here, this is the usual PvE type area where you'll be doing your hacking and slashing. As you can see, FPS and frame times are all over the place. Currently, I'm getting a solid 60 FPS. VSync is turned off. If I pause the game, options, followed by graphics, scrolling down here, VSync is off. Everything else is fine. Down here in these options, we've got eight options that we can change. There's only a few of these that actually matter. For a huge instantaneous performance boost, change effects from ultra down to low. Apply, and just like that, from 60 FPS, we're now at 90. So we gained a solid 50% of our FPS instantly. Then, the second heaviest hitter is shadow quality. If I drop this down so low, you'll again see very small change in the actual world itself, and we're sitting at a solid 104 FPS, so we gained maybe 15 FPS there. The final thing only really worth changing is post-processing quality. If I set this from ultra to low, I'm getting a solid 110 FPS, so a small boost there as well. The rest of the options seem to have practically no effect on performance. So from 110 right now, I'll go ahead and drop view distance down to low. Obviously, we can't see too much here. And as most of this game is set on rails where we're following particular paths, you're not really going to see into a huge open world. So there's no difference here. Then foliage at the very bottom, dropping this to low. While you'd expect a foresty type area to give you a boost in performance, well, actually, nothing changes. And the aliasing, if we drop this from ultra to low, as you can see again, absolutely no change. This might be because DLSS is overriding the anti-aliasing option, which would make sense if we turn this off. So we're not using DLSS or any upscaling. I'm getting a solid 117, 115 FPS. If we crank anti-aliasing to ultra from low, I'm still sitting at a solid 115, 16, so nothing changed. DLAA back on, 110, so we only lost a handful of FPS, but the game should look infinitely better. We've only really got shading quality and texture quality to drop here. If we drop shading quality again, you should see minimal impact, and yeah, nothing changed. The only other option that we can change here is texture quality, and this should really depend on how much VRAM your graphics card has available. I'm currently running 12 gigs on my graphics card, and the game is using a solid around 7.6 gigs in this current scene. Dropping this from ultra to high, we're still using 7.6, FPS hasn't changed, down to low, FPS has gone up by 3 or 4, and it's still at around 7.5. Five now gigabytes of VRAM. So as long as you have probably more than eight gigs of VRAM in your system, equal to or above, then you're probably gonna be just fine here. 
So raising those options that don't actually mean anything, really, at least for GPU limited cases, which should be most of them, being shading quality, AA, view distance, texture, and foliage, with all of these set to ultra, only really lowering three options, shadow quality, post-processing, and effects, I'm setting at a solid 110 FPS, which is a big improvement compared to the default with those options turned up of 60 FPS. Not too sure why there's such a huge impact, but if there's any options you're going to be dropping, make sure it's those three settings, the rest don't have too much impact. As for the weird glitchiness going on with the avatar here, it's just sort of the FPS that your player model and other players run at. It's a stylistic choice more than anything, so don't think that's necessarily lag or anything like that. But quickly entering a fight here, you can see FPS is absolutely everywhere. But if we pause, drop effects, shadow and post processing, down to the low, there's practically almost no change in visuals, but we've seen a massive improvement in FPS. So yeah, just a little bit weird, but there you go. Anyways, that's really it for this super quick optimization guide. There's not too much you need to worry about in this game. It's mostly optimized besides those three options. So yeah, anyways, thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.